I think many people don't recognize that, that engineering contributes to science, science contributes a great deal to engineering. The interaction between them is very, very important. Now, in fact, the discovery of the maser and the laser depend on that interaction. You see, I, I had some engineering experience at Bell Labs, and I knew quantum mechanics. Engineers knew, knew about oscillators, and most scientists didn't pay much attention to oscillators. But engineers didn't know much about quantum mechanics. But the maser required the combination of an oscillator and quantum mechanics, and so did, so did lasers. And that's, it's that combination which produces produced the new ideas. I was primarily interested in scientific uses uh, and so on. Nevertheless, I could see a lot of very important uses, such as, such as communications, which were shown to Bell Labs. Communications, very, very broad bandwidth. You could send an enormous amount of information on a light beam. In addition, a very concentrated power you could burn things and weld things and cut them and so on. I could foresee a lot of things. On the other hand, on the other hand there are many things I didn't foresee, such as medical use. It never occurred to me it would be very useful medically, but it is. We've got ultraviolet now, and, and there are some X-ray lasers, actually. Awesome X-ray lasers, and maybe they'll become more and more important. We can make them more and more accurate get higher and higher precision of time and distance and so on. We're now measuring the surface of the moon very accurately with them. In addition, lasers have become very, very powerful. As a laser being built at Livermore Laboratories, it'll have about a billion watts of power. What they're trying to do is turn hydrogen into helium, producing nuclear energy that way. And that may be a great source of nuclear energy, who knows? Uh, that's what they're aiming at and they're spending a lot of time and money on it, and maybe it'll work. Uh, there are many things we can't foresee. That's the nature of science. And new things are coming along, we can't predict, we have to try, we keep trying and finding, and every once in a while, fantastic things come through. Now, <clears throat> I think the laser will continue to grow and expand and new applications occur. I decided I could see some new things to be done in astronomy that other people were missing. For example, microwave astronomy. Most people didn't think microwaves would do any good for astronomy. We discovered the first molecules in interstellar space. Many astronomers felt there couldn't be molecules in interstellar space. In fact, when I came out here, the head of the astronomy department, who was a theorist, said, look, that's stupid for you to look for molecules. I can prove to you that they can't exist there. And I said, no, I think they may exist. I'm going to look. No, it was crazy. Well, I looked, and we found them. We found the first complex molecule, ammonia. And then there's water, and there's water mazes, and then the, by now there are hundreds of molecules been found in outer space, some very complex molecules. And so it's been a very, that's been a very important field. <clears throat> and we first started in the microwave region, and that's been a, an important area too. I'm working now in infrared, and I found a way of using lasers to do astronomy in the infrared, particularly to measure the size of stars. The lasers are very helpful in what's known as interferometry, that's why you have several telescopes. You move them far, far apart. You take a starlight coming from above into these two telescopes, and you join it. That allows you to get very high resolution and see very detailed shapes of stars, the sizes and shapes of stars for the first time. So we're measuring the sizes and shapes of stars. We look particularly at old stars, which are put out a lot of infrared and don't put out much visible light. Scientific discoveries, while they produce very important economic income, it takes a number of years for that to develop. And even the, the politicians don't recognize, you know, they can't support science very, so strongly because it isn't going to pay off immediately. It pays off many years later now. For example, the maser and the laser. The, the laser is now billions of dollars of business, but it's been about 50 years. And um, it frequently takes about 20 years for scientific discovery to begin to pay off heavily. Science is fun. Finding new things is fun. Uh, I've just had a good time all my life, and I, I encourage you to think about things, explore things, and find new things. <laughs> it's great fun, and it's very important for humans.